Hi there, this is Phil with PhilFX with another tutorial. Uh, what I want to discuss today is I want to give a brief overview on uh, the uh, a way of doing what parenting is in Maya and uh, give a brief example uh, I think that will demonstrate parenting very well. Uh, we're going to build a uh, real small solar system with some planets orbiting a sun and I think it's a good way to uh, demonstrate uh, how parenting works with that. So let's go ahead and get started. So if we're going to build a solar system, uh, one of the first things we, we need here is we need a sun. So let's start with a sphere. And I'll just put one on here. And let's put it in the center with the channel box. And let's go ahead and give it a color so it's easy to see. So let's go in here and add a uh, blend material. And we will call that sun color. And let's go ahead and we'll make that yellow because that's kind of close to what the sun looks like. All right. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to make a uh, uh, an earth. Let's go ahead and label this over here too so things don't get confused. Always reinforce to my students to be sure and label your objects. Uh, so let's go in. We'll create another sphere here. And this will be a little bit smaller. Uh, this doesn't need to be to scale, uh, especially for this exercise. I'm most interested in uh, just demonstrating parenting. Uh, you can uh, certainly do something to scale later on if you want to. Uh, let's go ahead and give that a color or, or a material. So we'll assign a new material and we'll do a Maya blend. And we will call this earth color. Now on the earth color, what I want to do is I really want to put a checkerboard on here so we can see that the earth rotates. So I'm going to click on this box. We get a dialog box up here and uh, go right down here for uh, Maya 2D textures. And I'm going to click on checker. And I'm not fond of black and white. So let's go ahead and do red for one color and let's do dark blue for the other. All right. So we put that on here and we don't see it yet, but that's because I haven't enabled it. If I hit six on my keyboard, I enable texture maps and we can see that color. Let's go back to my channel box. And if I put zero in for all that, I zero it in the center, but actually what I've done is I've placed it inside the sun. So let's do a translation on the earth. Let's rename that. Do a translation and to make things a little easier for this demonstration, let's go ahead and I'm going to click on the, the, mag the grid up here for the magnets and for snapping and I'm going to snap this out to uh, about 10 in the X direction. I can turn snapping off and so now we have the earth out here and it's away from the sun. Now one of the things that uh, the earth obviously does is it rotates on its axis. Uh, again, we're not going to do things for to scale here, so I'm just going to keep the axis vertical. But uh, we've got a uh, timeline down here. We've got 120 uh, frames displayed, and actually I want to make the whole thing 120 for the whole sequence. And so we have zero here and 120 frames out here. So if we want to rotate the Earth and have the Earth spin on its axis, well, up is the y-axis. So what we would like to do is at time frame one, we set the rotation, and I right-click here and I say key selected, and it's at zero. And at uh, 120, for purposes of illustration, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to spin the Earth quite a bit. So I'm going to make this value, say, uh, 1260, all right? So it's going to go 1260 degrees. I'll go over here and we key select it. So you can see that the Earth spins quite a bit, all right? So between zero frames and 120, we got quite a few rotations of the Earth going on there. All right, the next thing we want to do is... Uh, the Earth needs to go around the Sun, right? So how can we accomplish that? Well, it turns out, first off, if I just select the Earth, the pivot point, 
and we just demonstrated this, the center of rotation of the Earth uh, is around the center of the Earth, okay, which allowed us to be able to do a rotation around that center. Well, the movement of the Earth around the Sun, the center of rotation is the center of the Sun. Well, there's a number of different ways to accomplish this, but really the simplest way to do this is when you take an object, in this case we'll take the Earth, and we're going to make a group, but there's only one thing in that group and that will be the Earth. So essentially I'm going to group the Earth to itself. So if we go up here to the Edit menu, go down here to Group, we've just created a group. Now look, notice what happened here. Our uh, translation gizmo is at the center of world coordinates, which also happens to be where the center of the Sun is. And so now if I did a rotation, if we go here and hit E, if we do a rotation on that, notice the Earth will go around the Sun because the Earth group we have over there group, uh, its center of rotation is centered at the Sun. So let's go ahead and put this back to zero. And let's rename this group one Earth orbit. And so the Earth orbit a rotation of the Earth orbit will rotate the Earth around the Sun. So I haven't keyframed anything yet, so let's go ahead and put a keyframe on that. So we go over here, we right click on rotation Y again of Earth orbit, right click, say key selected. Let's go out here to 120 keyframes. And for this, I'm just going to go around once, so I'll say 360 degrees. And I right click again and I say key selected. So now we can see that after 120 frames the Earth makes one rotation around the Sun. And in addition to the Earth making one rotation around the Sun, the Earth itself, as you can see, because I picked that checkerboard pattern, which is why I did that, you can see the checkerboard texture of the Earth is also rotating. So we have two movements going on. The Earth rotating on its axis and the Earth orbit rotating the entire planet Earth around the Sun. So what would a, the Earth be without having a moon? So let's go ahead and we'll add a moon here. So let's put in another sphere and I'll make this guy small. Again I'm not doing this to scale. And let's go ahead and put this in the center for the moment just so I can keep things lined up. So that's in the center and now I can't see the moon so let's do one thing I'll show you a trick here. If you select an object and you hit Control H on a Mac or a PC that will hide that object. If I go select the Sun again and I hit Shift H that will go ahead and that will uh, show the object. So Control H hides it, Shift H shows it. I have to select it again, Shift H, and that will show it. Alright, so let's uh, hide the Sun again so I can see the Moon. And remember we snapped the Earth 10 divisions out, 10 Maya units out. Uh, what I'd like to do is we want the Moon to orbit the Earth, so we need to move that out. So let's grab this, hit the W key, and move this out and I can put snapping back on and we can snap that right to 12 alright so the moon is snapped at 12 uh, that makes it simple for right now and we need to put a texture on the moon so let's go ahead and do that so I'll right click on there assign a new material let's go ahead and get a blend again go over here and call this moon color all right and for this we'll do another checkerboard so we can see that it rotates so we'll do a checker and for this one uh, I don't know let's do uh, pink for one and black for the other. Uh, that's actually pretty close to the other one. So let's do pink and yellow. Well, that's enough to set your eyes on fire. Okay, so we'll do pink and yellow. All right, we can see that that's different than what we have for the Earth. 
and uh, now let's go ahead and do some of the same things. Let's name our planet. So that's the moon. All right. And we don't have to hide the sun anymore. So I can do a shift H and bring that back. And again, I'm not being realistic here, but let's just go ahead and we'll do some rotations of the moon on its own axis. So remember how I did that? So we select the moon and go back to our channel box. I set my uh, keyframe, I set my time back to the beginning and it'll be a rotation on the Y axis. And let's keyframe the selected and go out here. And so in 120 frames, let's spin the moon 720 degrees. Uh, let's see, I didn't want to do that. Take that. Here. I didn't have that selected, so let's go 720. All right, take that key selected. Boom. So now you can see that the moon is spinning quite a bit on its axis. So we have our first translation on the moon, and that's the moon rotates on its own axis. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is the moon needs to rotate around the Earth. Well, how did we do that before? Well, the way we did that before is we took the Earth and we grouped it to itself. So uh, if it worked for the Earth, it should work for the Moon. So let's go ahead and we'll take the Moon and we'll go up here to Edit and we will group it. And so now I have this group and remember we called the other group Earth Orbit, so this should be Moon Orbit. Right, and if we look inside the moon orbit, we have the moon itself. And let's say we want the moon to go around the Earth just once when uh, uh, we do 120 frames. So if we start here and we have a rotate Y is zero, we key the selection, and then we go out to the end here and we make this 360 degrees and we key that then we go in and lo and behold we've got a problem and I did this on purpose and if you were catching on you probably caught why I did it on purpose but what you can see is the moon is really not orbiting the earth the moon is orbiting the sun and the moon is orbiting the sun because when I grouped it to itself okay when I grouped the moon to itself, when you group an object to itself, the ori uh, the uh, the zero point for that uh, grouping, the, uh, uh, the pivot point, that's what I'm trying to say, the pivot point for that object, when you group it to itself, always goes to the zero, zero, zero of world axis. And that's what happened. So it put it in the center. When in fact, the since the Earth is orbiting the moon, we really want this pivot point for the moon orbit to be at the center of the Earth. Well, how can we accomplish that? Well, the easiest way to do that is let's go over here to our quad view, and I have top, front, and side. Let's look at this front view, and I'm going to go ahead and hit 4 so we just see an outline. And so here's the pivot for the uh, moon orbit, and we show it centered in the sun. What we'd like to do is put it in the center of the Earth. This is why initially I went in and I had things snap to grid because it just makes things a little bit easier. And I know that the exact center of the Earth is at snap to 10, so I'm going to say snap to grid. And here I go in and on a Mac, if you've got a full Mac keyboard, if you hit the home keyboard, home key, or on a PC, if you hit insert, notice how this changed. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate that pivot point. So I translate the pivot point for the moon and I put it to the center of the earth. I hit insert or the home key again and this goes back. Now we can hit six so we can see our textured surfaces. Hit space bar, go back to my quad view, put my mouse over the perspective view, hit space bar again. Now if we move this through, we can see that the moon does in fact orbit the Earth, but obviously we have another problem. What's going on here? Well, the moon is not moving with the Earth. Why is that? Well, because of parenting, 
the moon at the moment is just by itself. So the movement of the Earth orbit and or the Earth itself is not being translated to the moon. So what do we need to do? Well, I can take this and I can parent the moon orbit. So here's the uh, trick question. Do we parent the moon orbit to the Earth? Or do we parent the moon uh, orbit to the Earth orbit? Well, the correct thing is we parent it to the uh, Earth orbit. If we do that, now when the orbit moves around, the moon goes with it. All right. If we parented the moon orbit to the Earth itself, what would happen is that the rotations that we have put on the Earth would get translated to the moon orbit. So notice right now, if I go in and we move our timeline, okay, here's the moon. You can see the moon is pointing to the right of the screen and we go halfway around it points to the right to the screen so that's 360 degrees and we go around and that's 360 degrees so it makes two rotations all right if i took the moon orbit and parented it to the earth so now the moon orbit is parented to the earth let's count how many times the moon goes around so it goes around once twice two and three quarters, three times, four times, five times, five and a half times. This is actually why I put so many rotations on the Earth, is so you could see what's going on. What's going on is those translations of the parent, which is the Earth, are being put upon the moon orbit. So that's why the moon is translating with the Earth, the number of times that the Earth spins. Now, physically, to be correct, uh, because uh, if we were if this is a physics class, the moon actually does lock to the Earth's rotation. And so if I wanted to do that and have it locked to the Earth's rotation, then the correct parenting of the moon orbit would be to the Earth's shape. If I did not want to lock the orbiting of the moon to the Earth spinning, but in terms I wanted to lock it to the orbit, of the Earth going around the Sun, then I parent that moon orbit to the Earth orbit. So there really isn't necessarily a right or a wrong answer. It depends on what you're trying to do. In this case, for what I was trying to demonstrate, I'm showing that what I want to show for this case is that the moon orbit is parented to the Earth orbit. So you, what you can see from this and what we've covered is that translations of the parent are translated to the child. So we put the orbit has a rotation around the sun and it moves the moon with that. The moon on itself has a rotation on its own axis. And so the moon spins on its own axis because of translations there. The other thing is, is things don't flow up. They always flow down. So translations that I put on the moon don't affect the moon orbit. Translations I put on the moon orbit don't affect the Earth orbit. But translations on the Earth orbit, in fact, do infect everything down. So hopefully this uh, makes this a little bit clearer. Uh, parenting is a very powerful tool. It's uh, one that you'll use quite a bit and it definitely uh, uh, helps you in, in uh, your modeling and especially in the things that you do with animation in Maya. So I hope this has been helpful and this again is Phil with PhilFX. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Bye.